Father, we thank you. Speak to us, Lord, through your word. Let the Holy Spirit of God guide me and guide every one of us. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Greetings to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I surely hope and pray for every one of you that you all are safe. And we should be safe. Because we love a God and we serve a God who keeps us safe and who gives us the advices how to be safe. And he has a plan for every one of us and our soul to be safe for eternity to eternity. And accordingly, the Bible clearly says, punishment of God is coming upon them, those who disobey God. Today we are going to see the judgment of God which is going to come upon the disobedience. Disobedience, those who don't obey the law, obey the command. Then disobedience to hear his voice. God is telling you no, don't, not to go this direction. But still we go in this direction. Joshua chapter 7. Yes. Okay. Come on. Read up to 8. This is very important. Why this is very important? When Joshua heard the voice of God, Joshua dedicated his life for God. What was the word? Joshua was not selected by himself. Joshua did not say, I want to serve God. Joshua did not say, I want to go and lead the people of Israel. Joshua did not tell Moses, Moses, I also want to be like your servant, how you are servant of God and how you are mighty. I also want to be mighty like that. Joshua did not tell God. But God told Moses, you have to select this man, Joshua, who is same like you, who is a warrior, who is a runner, who is a hunter, who has a good build like you. And all the characters of Moses was in Joshua. That man, Joshua, God selected. Because Moses said, then who shall take the people of Israel to the promised land? When Moses asked this question unto the Lord, the Lord God Almighty in the Old Testament gave the answer to Joshua, saying that Joshua, you select one among the tribe. That is Joshua. When you select Joshua, he is same like you. You have to lay your hands and anoint him for the same type of power to work in his life. Same type of anointing to come upon his life. Not only that, he is with the same build. He has the same build like you, character like you. Now you lay hands and anoint him so that he shall receive the same anointing. After that, when Joshua made mistake and when God corrected, see how he accepts the mistake. What was the mistake, you know? The mistake was that Joshua did not do what God was telling him to do. Then he humbled himself before God and he does the will of God. By how he does that is what you are going to see. How God is telling him and how he, how he humiliate, humi, uh, you know, humbled himself before God and the action of his life. So dedicated in his spirit, soul and body and takes over the authority that God has given unto him. And after that, the Bible says, uh, the authority of God came to Joshua in chapter 1. Okay? In chapter 1, it came, from, it came to him from verse 5 to 9. But after that, in chapter 3, God, uh, chapter three, God is telling him to humble himself. And in, God, in Joshua chapter 7, see the humiliation or the humbleness of Joshua. So verses 1 to 8. Yes. A cursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. See, they were not supposed to do it, and Joshua did not control them. Joshua allowed them to do anything. See, today also, servant of God has a lot of responsibility. And when the servant of God does not tell the people of God what exactly they should do, God is not blaming the people. God is blaming the servant of God. Telling why? When I had given you this wisdom, this knowledge, you are supposed to preach, supposed to teach. The Bible clearly says that's why God has created a fivefold ministry. In that fivefold ministry, God has created apostles who has all of the four characters in the apostolic ministry. Then God has created the prophets who prophesy and edify the church. Why edification is required? Edification, they have the knowledge, they have the understanding, they are praying to God, but they are not edified. In what? They are praying to God, but not edified. Not edified in what? That the God is able to hear my prayer. They are not edified. They are not come to that maturity that God is answering my prayer. This is what is the prophetical. They, they edify the church. They 
declare the work of God. They declare the prophetical work. They declare that God has heard your prayer and going to give you the blessings to everybody. Number three, evangelist. Evangelist goes and preach the gospel. Evangelist, the work of the evangelist is giving the gospel, not inside the church, outside the church. Go outside, preach the gospel, bring them to salvation. Their ending subject is everyone to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Any evangelist does not do that work, he is not a proper evangelist. God does not accept him as an evangelist. He may go to house to houses to pray, preach, and lots of things may be happening, but he is supposed to give them the salvation message. Through them, they are supposed to accept Jesus Christ and get saved. That is the evangelical work. So, number four and five is important for us as a church. That is called the pastoral. Pastor is supposed to take care of them A to Z, from the birth till the last. All right? Supposed to take care of every type of things and to guide them and lead them, and that is the responsibility of pastors. If they don't do it, God is questioning them and God is asking them. Not only that, in case if the people of God is sinning, the people of God sin, God is questioning the pastors. The next thing is teachers. They are supposed to teach the word of God, not about the world. And these characters we have to understand. So like that, God is selecting the people. And when the people of God does not listen to the voice of God and still they do according to their own, then God starts giving them the punishment and the anger of the God is you know, kindled upon themselves. Come back to the word. And the Bible clearly says, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Then. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. Ali, Ai, yes. Then the Bible clearly says the men, those who went and see all how it is, how is the country with the people of God, Israel can go there and all that. Even to go to the promised land of Canaan, you know, Joshua did the same thing. The next word, verse 3. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. They are few people, but you send thousand, two thousand, so that they can fight with them, and then they can come back and give us the report, and we can go forward, and go forward, and go forward, and get the promised land of Canaan. That was the purpose of God. Moses could not go to the promised land because of one weakness. Tell me, what is that weakness? Anger, Anger correct. Anger against whom? People of God? No. Anger against God. Not realizing what God is telling me and what I am supposed to do it. Many times God is telling us to do something and we are angry. No, I hereafter I will not pray. No, I will not read the word of God. To whom you are challenging? With whom you are challenging? To whom you are saying that? You are not about to say like that. No, now hereafter, no, God did not answer my prayer. I will not pray to God. There are people those who say like that. There are people also say that I will not read the word of God. I will not go to church. No, 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 no. I go regularly, but nothing has happened in my life. What has happened in my life? I am still in problem. I am still in suffering. And my sufferings are not getting over. How come one after the other sufferings are coming? No use of mine going to the church. This thought will surely the devil will bring upon you. This type of thoughts will surely come. This thought came to Moses. This thought came to Joshua. This thought came to 360 million people of Israel. But my brothers, my sister, only those who are strong in the word of God, those who know the word of God, they will be able to understand what is the plan of God and what is the wish of God. They will be able to understand. And my, uh, my intuition is only one thing, that we should be able to understand what God is teaching us to do. We should be able to do it. It means obey God's voice, obey God's word, obey God's saying. Because Bible says in a different manner. God speaks in a different manner. If you read Proverbs chapter 3, we'll, we are going to come back to that. Let us go further. Let us go to the verse 4. So, so there. So there went up hither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. Verse 5. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto the Shivarim and smote them in the going down. Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became as water. The next word, verse 6, 7, and 8. Now hear these verses I'm going to read for you. 
you know, just to save your time. And Joshua rent his clothes. Look unto these scriptures. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide or until the evening comes. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their head. They put their dust. That was the morning time in the Old Testament. That, time, that was the type of mourning and weeping before the Lord when they sin also. They used to rent their clothes. They used to go and sit in the dust places or they used to sit in the streets and put the dust upon their life and mourn before God and repent before God. That was the Old Testament pattern. The Bible says, verse 7 and 8 is important. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us unto, into the land into the hand of the Amorites. Amorites were stronger people. To destroy us would, would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. Then verse 8 says, O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their back before their enemies? They are not supposed to. Verse 6 was very, very important. That he turned or his tore his clothes and he rented his clothes and sat down at the dusty places and put all the dust upon himself. How many of you remember when Job lost all his properties? He lost his oxen, he lost his sheep, he lost his silver, gold, robbed everything and all the servants, they took away every type of sheep and oxen and went away from his, you know, uh, from his territory, left him. Then they, the devil attacked his sons, went and destroyed their palaces, and their palaces fell down and all the sons died. Then the Satan went and destroyed where the daughters were staying. They also destroyed, Satan destroyed their palaces and they fell down and the daughters also died. All the sons died, all the daughters died. Now only wife remained because wife was with him. Wife was saved without, because of whom? Because of righteous man. She was not perfect. She was not loving God. She never prayed to God. She never believed in God. She never had anything to do with God. But she was staying with Job. And because of Job, God saved his wife and kept her alive. Wherever Job was, his wife was there. Until when? Now listen. There is another lady you can remember. Remember Lot's wife. We had a message. Lot's wife also was with Lot. Till she was in, with Lot. Till she comes out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Till she hears the sound of blast and burning at the back of Sodom and Gomorrah, she had faith. But when it started, she was having only one thing. Will God destroy these people like that? Will God put fire? Now also, question is there. Will God destroy the people on the earth with this type of plagues and all? You will see. When the man and woman turns against God for disobedience, the plagues are coming from God also. And they are so horrible. The Bible says God will laugh at them, look at them when they are in plagues, when they are in calamities. God will look at them and laugh at them. Why? Because when God was speaking to them with humility, when God was teaching them with humbleness, when God was telling them with all simplicity, obey my voice, obey my voice, obey my laws, obey my laws, obey my commandments, obey my commandments. I am a living God. I am not living in idols. They were not listening. They were doing their own thing. And God, then when he punishes then he is happy when they are punished with the plagues and God laughs at them. Why? Because when I was telling, they were laughing. And now when they are punished, I am happy. Because of disobedience only, God is happy. My brothers, my sisters, disobedience has brought a lot of problems in many good men and mighty men of God in the Old Testament. And their children also. And I am going to come back to that. Uh, the first son and daughter, or first sons, were Cain and Abel, right? We are going to come back to that. But listen to this word 6. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. And he and the elders of the Israel and put dust upon their heads. And they were actually completely humiliated. And they put themselves into humble says, saying that, Lord, we did not do what exactly you told us. God told them to go ahead. But they were watching whether these people are mighty Amorites are good, they will kill us, how the giant people, whether they have that good strength and they have all our armies and everything, whether we'll be able to go to that place. Like that they were thinking. And all these thoughts were against God's voice or against God's command to go to the promised land of Canaan. 
the bible clearly says disobedience not obeying god's voice brings lot of trouble prov chapter 3 Verses 3 onwards. Okay, go ahead from verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Don't forget my laws. Now this is for whom? For son. And now when this word we hear son, we always think that for God is speaking to the children. No, God is speaking to us because we are his sons and daughters. How grown I am, that is not cause. That is not the, how big I am, how, you know, what is my age, that is not cause. Or that is not the cause of, you know, saying to the Lord that I cannot be a child of God. No, any age, any age, children, those who have accepted the Lord and born again, they are the children of the living God. Remember, so we are the children and God is saying to us, my son, forget not my law. Don't forget my law. This God who was telling to the people of Israel in the Old Testament, is also continuously telling to the people and advising people of God, that's you and I, in the Old Testament, as the days went on, and as the promised land was released and given unto them, and as the people of God came out of Egypt and went to the promised land, and the people of Israel started multiplying on the earth, God is still not stopped giving the laws, teachings, and commandments of God to the people of God. Understand that today also God is speaking to us. Many laws we do not know. And when we hear the laws of God, and then we start praying, Lord, help me to follow that. Many of us, we do not know. No, we know it. But sometimes we forget to follow. So God is reminding us. Number two. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. When you obey the laws of God, commandments of God, what exactly is given? Length of days are given. Long life is given. Peace is given and they shall be added unto you. Remember these scriptures. The Bible says the man who is disobedient cannot have long life. This is sort of a thing. The Bible says length of days will not be there. And even if he has a length of days, even if he has a long life, even she has a long life, many people are there. Those are not left uh, you know, drinking. Those are not left smoking. Those people are still there. God knows what exactly is holding them. Those are still rebellious. Don't want to believe in Jesus Christ our Lord. They say these people are all fanatic. They are only believing in Jesus. They do not know the truth. But most of the times, the truth what God has given unto you to follow Jesus Christ, and the same truth when they know it, but yet they are blinded, their eyes by the devil. They see the word, they don't understand the word. They hold the word, the Holy Bible, but they cannot preach the same time. They have the scriptures, but they say, no, no, we don't want to believe in this. We are so and so Christians will follow like that. But the Bible says that what is happening to such people, they become disobedience to the voice of God. They become disobedience to the laws of God. They become disobedience to the voice of God, laws of God, and teachings of God. When this happens, God does not add the life. And even if they have a life, God does not add the life for them. And because of the mercy and the price paid by Jesus Christ our Lord, what is the price paid by Jesus by our Lord Jesus. What is the price Price paid? Number one, sin price is paid of mine and ours. Number two, curse and sicknesses price is paid by our Lord Jesus. Number three, death penalty. Because Jesus paid the death penalty, we cannot die early. We cannot die untimely. We cannot. The realization has to be in your life and my life. These three things he has done, therefore we are alive today. By mistake, sometimes we are done. After coming into the Lord also, we have done. We have done before coming to the Lord, and now we understood that this was my mistake and our mistake. Now we came to the Lord, still after coming to the Lord, we are doing the same thing. And still after that, God is still giving us, you know, length of days, long life. But what is lost? God has still given us length of days, God has given us the long life. People are still living. But what is gone? Peace is gone. Health is gone. They're living in sickness. They're living in trials. They're living in tribulation. They're living in sorrows. They're living in pain. And this is what is the judgment of God upon disobedience people. God says, when the people become disobedience to my voice and don't hear my voice, don't hear my laws and don't obey my laws and don't obey my commandments of God, this is what he says. That they will be suffering with lack of peace, joy and happiness. 
they will have good salary they will not be able to enjoy the salaries they will have money in their hands they will not be happy after buying all the things of god my brother my sister you know i do not know how to express you what they are saying today the people those are under the attack of the evil attack of the corona evil or the virus evil and how they cry and how they ask there are many people those who are gone those who are talking you know those who are talking and saying no no i will do like that i gave you the example last week about a young daughter who told his her mother when she was actually she was 3 months in uh, this situation and the first month she was actually because of corona and corona has guarantees 14 to 15 days or 18 days or 20 days whatever it may be after that it was not corona then what was the problem for her to be in the hospital being a so young age or maybe 25 28 or 30 years of age why she was in the hospital still the reason is because they treated her during this corona virus and gave her the oxygen and nebulizer those things that did not reach unto her organs well the oxygen did not reach her organs well and the organs shrinked and organs did not function properly they became you know uh, improper function and they had to be treated again so then she got cured from covid but her organs were not create, uh, cured so she was put into another hospital and she was under the treatment and it was surprising that all the treatment was going on and during the last a few days of time she came back to her conscious and she was okay dialysis were going on so many other things were going on so many other complications they were used to find out and it is in a young age and all these things and all the recovery was very less believe me believe me nobody told me about that i whoever informed me after that i told them why you did not tell that she was in different hospital she was in this hospital why you did not tell that she is out of covid because i was under the impression that she is under covid still would have gone and prayed would have at least prayed over the phone because the mother could visit her so definitely we could visit her for prayers so for the mother two days when the mother was going and visiting her she was telling now i want to do orphanage i want to spend all my money that i saved in kuwait to utilize for the poor and i want to take care of the poor and i want to take care of that that was first day she spoke second day she spoke third day mother went third day also she was speaking the same thing she said you need rest now you rest well you are looking better you are all right and mother came out and that same night she passed away imagine the time does not come to us or come to anybody again and again there is a plan and purpose of god to speak to everybody and there is a time that god has given unto us this is a sad thing because i am able to hear them and they told me and i am able to express to you and there were some other so many other people those who are from goa they were speaking to me over the phone the one of the champ was that he got three academic reward a young man 42 years of age married 42 years of age married his wife was brother just pray that i shall be out but he was you know was talking very slowly and i used to ask this he was all alone in the hospital but he was keeping his phone there were many people who were keeping the phone nowadays but who can save only god can save so before all this could happen let us hear the voice of god let us come back to the knowledge of god let us know the laws of god let us know the command of god let us get into the teachings let us understand i cannot be disobedient to god we can tell god god i am not able to obey your laws i am not able to obey your teachings commandments you help me to do your will help me to obey your laws obey your commandments help me to be obedient to your voice that you speak to me so that i shall strengthen myself my bones are weak my body is weak my mind is weak my character is weak help me lord so that you can get into the strength of god and come out of that weaknesses and tell the lord by the help of god i shall overcome help me help me help me and you shall overcome overcome all that you are not able to overcome because of your character because of your circumstances because of your situation and you will surely overcome then what happens when you overcome you become a obedient child of god an obedient child of god receives the blessings of god of a length of days long life peace is added this obedient child of god may receive the length of days may receive the long life but cannot receive peace always stubborn always sorrowful always disturbed always attack of the devil one after the other problem comes 
keep on coming keep on coming then when it happens so also one has to think immediately do not delay immediately what is the reason that i am against god or god is against me you have to think about that and set out your life so that you shall be blessed the word of god says verse 4 uh, verse 3 and 4 you must remember the truth you must remember god is merciful yes given mercy lot of mercy for me grace and uh, though i was a sinner though i am a sinner god has saved us and this is what the mercy of god we should never for, for, forsake or forget but truth truth should not be forsaken truth you cannot say brother i cannot follow i don't want to follow no if you know the truth you must be a follower of the truth then bind them about the neck write them upon the table of Thine heart. Here you have to write. That's why the Bible clearly says, "Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in your heart." So that once Jesus comes in your heart, your entire body and the life and the character is changed. Your mind can be like Christ. Your body can be like Christ. Your talks can be Christ. Your words can be like Christ, and you can be like Christ powerfully, casting out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead. Coming back to the Word of God, four and five, please. God gives you the understanding and you find the favor of God. Favor of God is peace, favor of God is blessing, favor of God is no attack of the devil. Favor of God is good health of God. Favor of God that what bread you eat, you eat it with joy, peace and happiness. The favor of God the day that you sleep and get up, you have a you know peaceful sleep and sound sleep and you get up in the strength of God. Favor of God that whatever you earn you are able to enjoy that. Favor of God is whatever you have the family all around you, your wife your husband you are able to enjoy the life of them so also your sons you are able to enjoy the life of your son your daughters you are able to enjoy the life of your sons and daughters you must be we must be able to understand this comes only by the favor of god that favor of god we shall not lose you shall not lose and therefore some of the people may be thinking last week you know i asked some question to a sister all these days she was not coming and nowadays she started coming so i asked her a question i said Oh, what will do what you will do when you god is speaking to you giving you the choices giving you the blessings of god what exactly you will do i will take up whatever god is telling and then after that that's all she never said or that person or the family never said no we will dedicate our life to god we will start coming for fellowship god is still speaking to us you are so nice man you are praying every time to us you never said i will not pray come for a fellowship only then i will pray you prayed for us over the phone you are praying here also they never said that you know we will commit ourselves for a good fellowship and we'll continuously come in the church we'll attend the church regularly they never want to say that they just want the favor of god they just want the blessings of god but they don't want to hear the voice of god god was saying that time you are receiving this you make a choice i will bless you but in the choice they are not saying that i will also make a choice to come for a fellowship weekly no what is this they want the blessings they want the prosperity but they don't want to dedicate their life listening to the voice of god this is what is today's subject is very very important subject bible says those who disobey god's voice will be under the judgment of god those who will not obey the voice of god or disobey the voice of god <clears throat> will be under the punishment of god voice of god is heard by your own eyes it not need not to be only the word of god heard by you you are already heard and when you see things are not home in at home perfect you have to set right the things at home when you see the things of god or things of whatever god has spoken to us earlier is not good in my life i should be set right those things in my life in my character in my talk in my word in my seeing in my talking we have to set right this and therefore the bible says disobedience does not come only by hearing the word hearing the word of god is already done but then obeying the word of god is very very important so when you don't obey you still become disobedient you heard the word of god of obedience but you are not following that and when you become disobedient the problems comes from god alone god does not favor us at all because knowingly we are becoming disobedient another word i want to tell you from exodus chapter 20 when the parents become disobedient the ch- the punishment which comes upon the father and the mother goes to the children understand this as a fathers most of them are fathers and mothers here we should be able to understand we may be coming to that stage later 
but God wants me to begin my obedience with God, with God's laws and God's teachings and God's commandment. I have to be obedient. You have to tell your person, next person, your husband, your son, your daughter, your wife, your kin and kid, that we have to obey the voice of God. Laws of God, command of God. So we shall walk into the bliss of God. The man who does not tell the families, keep them under darkness. And the darkness will bring disobedience uh, to their uh, yeah. The darkness will bring disobedience in their life. And that disobedience brings God's curse upon their life. And they are under curses. The Bible says, the last verse, was 5. Trust, Trust in the Lord. With all and... Don't depend upon yourself. God knows I'm weak. God knows my character. God knows I'm this situation. God knows I'm that situation. What to do, what to do, what to do. No. The Bible clearly says, disobedience to God brings the judgment of God upon us. And this is what is very important. Bible says in Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. Now when I spoke about Proverbs chapter 3, I would like to tell you about Cain. And Abel. Cain and Abel were two sons for Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were actually married by God. God instituted marriage in Eden Garden. God blessed first man, Adam. Two, seven. Okay, come on. Okay, five, six, and seven. Let us read. <clears throat> and every plant of the field before it was earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. <clears throat> now verse 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now ground is already there. Everything God created from the dust of the ground, not from the ground, but God formed man of the dust of the ground, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Therefore, God has a control over this soul. This soul is not ours. This is breath by God. That's why after the death, our body is buried into the dust. Because we are created of the dust, it has to go to the dust. But the spirit and soul goes to the kingdom of God, who is the creator, who has breath. The spirit of God came into us. Soul is created in us. Spirit and soul goes. Therefore, when the second coming of our Lord is there, when the Lord is coming, all those who are dead will rise up again. How they will rise up? When the bodies have become dust, how they will rise up? They will rise up with a glorious body. That glorious body is transparent. That glorious body is like a frame. Only outwardly you can see the face and everything. But when you touch it, there will not be. It's a glorious body. Divine body that God has given unto that man who went to the dust, trusting in the Lord Jesus. So remember, the Bible clearly says, this is because of the obedience of laws, commandments, and what we have done unto the Lord, we will have that glorious body. Otherwise, we are not going to be, we will be risen up again, but we are not going to be with the Lord. We are going to be put into the lake of fire to be burned. That is the punishment of disobedience. Not hearing the voice of God. Not knowing the creation of God. Not knowing that we belong to God. Not knowing that my spirit and soul does not belong to me. It belongs to God. God has created me of the dust. And put into me the breath of God. And the soul has become we have to recognize nothing we can do alone without God. And to do according to the will of God, one has to hear the voice and obey the laws and obey the commandments of God. The Bible says, this is what God was telling them in the Old Testament. Leviticus chapter 26, 10 to 16. Uh, 14 to 16. 15 to, uh, 14, 14, 14 to 16. Come on. If you don't hear me and don't do all these commandments, listen why I'm only bringing a specific scriptures to you from the Old Testament. Still, then we can go to the New Testament. If you don't hear my voice and don't obey my commandments, the Bible says, and if he shall despise my 
statutes. Or if you have so abhor my judgment. Yeah. So that he will not do all my commandments, but that he break my covenant. Now I will read for you one more time. And if you shall despise, if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments. Now remember, why God is talking about the judgments of God connected to soul? My soul, because the soul knows. When I rub, I am able to understand. No need to know the commandments of God. Any religion person knows robbing is wrong. I tell lie. Any religion person says you should not speak lies. When I get angry against my father, mother, any religious person can tell. No, you should not shout at your mother and father. Is it not happening in all the religion? But this is created by our God, given unto us by our God. And God said, these are my laws and my commandments and my teachings. You are supposed to obey. And when you obey, you are out of judgment. If you do not obey, you are under my judgment of disobedience. Not only that, the Bible also says, this judgment will come upon them, those who disobey the law of God. It's like a gravity. You throw something up, automatically it will fall. Your soul knows it, your righteousness and unrighteousness. God has put the breath of God in our lives. And God has created a soul in us. The soul has to recognize. That's why people talk, instead of talking soul, or they say that my conscience, my conscience does not permit me. But the Christian man will say, my inner man does not permit, or my soul, most probably they don't say my soul does not permit. They always say like that, my inner man does not permit. My conscience does not permit, the worldly people say. Some other people will say that my inner man or my, you know, conscious and another thing, the Holy Spirit in me does not permit. The Holy Spirit is telling me I am wrong. The Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God is telling me I am sinning. The Holy Spirit of God is telling me I am disobeying God. The Holy Spirit of God is telling me I am disobeying the commandments of God. The, the, the Holy Spirit of God is telling me I am bowing down to idol. The Holy Spirit of God is teaching me and telling me I am lying to somebody. I am doing sin in my life in spirit, soul and body. That's why the Bible clearly says God has recognized the sins of the body, recognized the spins, uh, so, or sins of spirit as well as soul. How is he able to recognize? Because from the soul we did not accept the will and the word of God. Now remember this. The Bible says, okay, read that verse 16, the last verse. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. I will appoint over you terror, so consumption, and the burning argue that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Now, whatever you want, the enemy will take away. You know, this connected to so many things, this connected to the field, this connected to your houses, this connected to your silver, gold, money, all the things that God has given unto you, and somebody takes it, deceives you, and loots you with good talks. All the things, and today, if you are in this situation, you must be able to understand somewhere I have done wrong. My brothers, my sister, when you do wrong and I do wrong and when I disobey God, God tells me that I am doing disobedience. Remember, God had given the law to Adam and Eve to not to eat that fruit, not to touch the tree, not to eat that fruit and never do that, they will surely die. They did not do that. They, they broke the only law of God. God put them out of Eden Garden. But God, whatever commandments and whatever blessings God had given them, they had received it. What is that? You will multiply. You will be fruitful. You will be blessed. Okay? But now curses came to all that. What was the curses? You, you will earn, but with labor. You will have children, but with sorrows and pain and agony she will bear. You will have everything, but there will not be peace. Why? Because you did not obey the laws of God. Look at the life of Adam and Eve before they go out of Eden or they were kicked out of Eden. How was their life? So good life. If, the, if their sons would have been born in Eden Garden, they would have been excellent. They would have been lovely. They would have been very handsome. They would have been having God knowledge of God and God's fear. And they would have been very lovely sons and very lovely daughters. But they did not have. And before than that, they broke the laws of God and commandments of God. And when God put them out of Eden Garden, then the sons were born. Why? That laws and that blessing God had already given. But the peace was not there in the house. The joy was not there in the house. The love between two brothers were not there in the house. The love with the parents were also not there. You will say, how it is possible? Yes, 
because they were disobeying god they wanted to go and offer the sacrifice unto god cain also offered because cain was a farmer he brought all the things from the field and he gave little only to god abel selected he was a he was a shepherd abel was a shepherd boy he collected all the sheep and goats what say it may be he collected the best sheep for the lord to offer and the bible clearly says lord was very happy because it was a blood sacrifice when he offered sheep god was very happy but with cain's offering god was not happy and what happened cain became angry the spirit changed when they were in eden garden if they would have obeyed the law this character would have been not there in cain but cain is totally now changed his conscience is dead his soul is not accepting the will of god the love of god towards his brother and what he has done he killed his own brother abel after killing god is asking him where is your brother and he is answering god back what he is saying he is not asking forgive me i have done wrong i have killed my own brother no he is saying i am not my brother's keeper and god is saying the blood of your brother abel is crying in the wilderness and then he keeps quiet and god puts all type of punishment if cain is alive but under the punishment of god that everyone who will see him will stone at him my brother is my sister you will become vagabond that's why god told cain vagabond you cannot stay at one place you will be always wandering here and there like a mad guy like a mental man you will be going around here there you will not be eating at your parents house you will not be staying there he became a vagabond he was away from parents he did not why disobedience of god's law disobedience of god's voice disobedience of commandments of god today god is telling you when the disobedience come judgment of god is upon us for every man and woman of disobedience god's judgment is coming upon us but still we are living the living reason this is the old testament that is we have read from leviticus but according to the new testament your sin price is paid by jesus your curses pride and sin and sicknesses pride is paid by jesus your death penalty is paid by jesus that is the only escape for you but it is not a, actually you, you are not obedient but it is because of jesus you are saved you are blessed you are delivered you are healed and you can set right your life you can set right your soul unto god by knowing whether you obey the laws teachings commandments or whether you hear the voice of god or not that's why many people would send them the message of jesus christ our lord that he was born out of virgin mary he died on the cross of calvary he was buried in the tomb rose again on the third day whoever believes upon him he shall be saved and this is happening this is true even if they die they say that we have i am peaceful brother there's a man who told me that i am peaceful i don't know i feel that even if the death comes it is okay not able to bear this pain not able to bear this breath always i was afraid afraid about the death but now when i prayed this prayer i feel it okay even if god takes never mind and you know why that uh, strength came to them why that boldness came to them even if i die okay before they said brother please pray i should not die please pray i shall not die please pray my breath is not problem i'm afraid to sleep please pray i shall not die but after accepting jesus christ as our lord and savior they say brother never mind if the death comes now i'm not afraid about death why the assurance has come because of jesus christ our lord my brother is my sister before we did not accept him but now we accept him before we did not hear his voice now we are hearing his voice before we did not know the laws now we understand the laws of god before we did not obey the commandments now we are obeying the commandments of this is very very important for you and i the bible clearly says disobedience bring god's judgment upon those people those who are disobedient to laws of god teachings of god commandments of god the punishment of god comes upon them one more time what the bible says verse 16 i also will do this unto you yes i will even appoint over you a terror yeah consumption yes and the burning of argus yeah that shall consume the eyes yes and cause sorrows of heart yeah you shall sow your seed in vain you have your labor is going to go in vain all the labors you may say no i am earning but not sitting man not staying in my hands you may say i am trying to build but 6 years past 5 years past there's a request letter has come to me that we are building the house for last 7 years and it's not getting completed we have money 
we gave it to one builder he took and went away another builder came we thought that genuinely he will do everything and something happened he also did not continue he returned only half the money half the money is not given third person came third person started the work little only and suddenly he disappeared fourth person came and he has assured what shall we do shall we give it to him or not your money you are not able to build your own house you have everything to them you have everything and you say remember therefore when i send the scriptures they said they never read the scriptures that god is the builder unless and until god builds we cannot build our own homes unless and until god builds the marriages marriages cannot be blessed unless and until god builds your life you cannot build your life unless and until god builds a job you cannot earn money we don't know this we don't know this we don't know why we don't know because we never understood the laws of god we never read we never heard we nobody taught them nobody te- uh, teaching them and we don't want to hear also you tell them brother come for a service they don't want to come they said no we are very strong christian we don't want to come to hear but what exactly we are teaching them what exactly we are telling them we are telling them the truth and today if you know the truth you shall be able to understand i should be obedient child of god i should be obedient to laws of god i should be obedient to his voice i should be obedient to all the commandments of god so that i shall not be under the punishment or judgment of god make this good decision my brothers so many decisions i am making in my life day by day day by day day by day probably you may not be knowing but really i am making some of them those who are praying with me i am telling them let us make a decision what is the decision we shall hear the voice of god how you will hear the voice of god now you are going to work i am going to i am not going you are going to work how you will hear the voice of god through the word of god through the word of god you are hearing the voice last time we read hebrew chapter 12 and what was the verse 25 Hebrew chapter 12 oh yes praise god thank you brother you have good memory Ch- Hebrew chapter 12 was 25 what it says it says i am speaking to you from heaven, heaven. whose voice you are hearing from heaven who is in heaven god, god the son god the holy spirit all the angels of god god is speaking to you from heaven come on read it that see, see that you refuse not him that speaker you refuse not that speaker to somebody they are saying no this is protestant teaching i told them okay open your christian bible i will not mention what it is i told them open your christian bible open okay start reading and I, i told them they said your bible is different our bible is different bible is not different translation is different correct or not translation is different not different bible is same of god speaks about god the father speaks about god the son jesus christ speaks about the holy spirit then i told them The how Jesus was born. Oh, we are very happy. We thought that Protestants don't speak about the birth of Jesus. That Jesus was born out of Virgin Mary. They don't believe. I said it is written in the Bible. I told them don't simply say yes and all. Go back to this chapter, Luke chapter one. I go. I told them, and the man was very nicely hearing, and he was telling. Hey, of course, he's gone. Huh? So he was telling his wife, sit on here in Konkani and listen. So correct it is. See what exactly happened. It becomes a shock for us. we never heard the voice of god this is the voice of god make changes in your character bring changes in your mind make changes in your attitude immediately he told her to sit down why because the spirit of god spoke to him he understood god speaking to him and he's making his wife to sit down and hear the word of god this is what is required with christians that we should be able to hear the voice of god from the word of god you hold the word and don't hear the word of god a big mistake so hear the word of god no need that 20 chapter 30 chapter to read every day read one paragraph faithfully read that one paragraph but before you read that one paragraph you say to god god i want to hear your voice i want to know who you are i want to know what you are going to do in my life i want to know what exactly you are going to do that i should not suffer i i should have a good life what is your plan in regards to whatever you are thinking money job property residence Uh, court cases what shall it may be what shall it may be you ask him last few days i'm uh, i'm speaking like that sometimes i'm getting up at night and immediately i'm praying and again i'm why i get up because people call me at night i answer their phone i afford then i become awake after getting awake i i said this is the best opportunity to pray otherwise i'm not getting up for midnight or early morning 2 o'clock for prayers so i pray that time then i i, I don't even understand 
Then after the prayer, then when I'm trying to sleep again, again I'm get up, getting up for prayers. And then we are making a decision that we shall read the word. And through the word of God, only God speaks. Nothing else. If this brother comes and tells you, this is the scripture, brother, and his famous scripture is Philippians chapter 4, verse 20. Come on, tell. No, you forgot. Huh? If you see chapter 320, come on. Unto him is able to do do more than exceedingly above all that you are thinking. Able to do all the things that you are thinking. God should do, uh, you know, give me this money. God should do this one. God should make my travel successful. God should take away this COVID. Not, it shall not. He is able to do much more than what you are thinking and asking about. Going to show you much more than what you are thinking. More. You are asking for little. He is going to give you more. That more is coming only when you are able to hear the voice of God. If you don't hear the voice of God, you become disobedient. So learn to hear the voice of God. And the Bible clearly says, uh, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. See that you don't refuse who is speaking to you. Uh, speaketh. For if they... Before people, those who are on the earth, they refuse. See, Bible says, for if they escaped not, those who escaped not, those who underwent the problems, trial, tribulation, suffering, who refused to refuse him that spoke on the earth. Then, much more, also much more, we shall not escape when God is speaking to me and you. Why God is speaking? So that you shall become obedient and disobedience shall disappear and you shall walk into the bliss of God. Much more shall not we escape. We shall also not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. If we turn away from him who is speaking to us through the word of God, through the holy scriptures, through the holy Bible, through the holy men, through the holy woman, through the good family friends, God is speaking to you, giving you the scriptures. And if you don't want to obey, then you will also not escape. That's we are in the earth. So God wants you to be obedient. Come back to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 19 and 20. This is the final verse, and we will be closing down. But if we turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Sanctified for my name. Will I cast out of my sight? And, and will make it be a proverb and by word among all nations. The Bible clearly says, verse 19. But if you turn away, but if you turn away it means God is speaking to you. Don't want to come, don't want to hear. There are people, those who come only when they have some type of problems. Now, when I speak about the problems, you don't get hurt. Because some of you are facing some problem. But they came here with the problems. Some of them, they went away. Now again coming back. Only because of their problems. You must be seeing some of the people, those who are not coming for years together, they're coming again. Have you seen? Have you seen? Uh, Fridays mostly you must be able to see. When is just one or two here and there. But Fridays mostly. And they call me also. I told them, no, you better come because I'll be preaching. And while preaching, God will give you the word. Or else, after the preaching, when I pray, God will give me the word to give it to you. And you take it. Surely the word will come. No, last Friday also we came. We did not receive. It means what? If the word does not come, they will not come. No, it should not be like that. Bible says if you turn away. Don't turn away from the word of God. Don't turn away from the fellowship. I'm screaming and shouting. And I, I see whenever I tell people, bring your husband, bring your wives, bring your sons, bring your daughters for fellowship. They have so many excuses. So many good educated father, mother don't want to bring their sons, don't want to bring their daughters, don't want to bring them for fellowship. They feel that, oh, okay, never mind if they don't come. Let them be at home. No, he's taking rest. He studied early morning, so he is now taking rest. Why he has to study only on Fridays? Why he has to study only on Fridays? He can study the rest of the, all of the days early morning. But why only on Fridays? Either the devil is not allowing him, or whether he's turning against God, 
disobedience. Disobedience to hearing his voice. Or he is turning away from God's fellowship. You have to recognize. Sometimes it happens to me and happens to you. And you have to understand all those. And the Bible clearly says, And forsake my statutes and my commandments. Forsaking. Unless and until you keep on having hearing the word of God, you will not forsake the laws, commandments and teachings of God, which I have said before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Any other gods. See, G is normal. Now, the new edition is coming up. I will not mention which Christianity. New edition is coming up. New Bible is coming up. Two things are edit edited. Number one, the commandments of bowing down to idols is removed. The commandments of God to bow down to idols is removed. Number two, all the words of God is become small. Now such a great mistake Christians are doing. I'm talking about Christian denomination. And it's already under printing, they say. And how many copies? Seven million copies to be distributed all around the world. Seven million copies will be distributed. This will be the first round. Depending on that, the second round will be decided. Imagine the first round, they are distributing the word of God where the commandments of God to bow down, the third commandment is taken out. Then, all the words which is God, G, capital in our Bible, is God, they are going to make it small g. What will happen? The other gods and our God, you are making them together. Who will be punished? The people, those who do it, the Christian congregation, denomination, those who do it, and all the Christians, those who follow that Bible. What a great tragedy to Christian people where the Lord Jesus has paid the penalty, giving his own body, his blood, and died on the cross of Calvary, which has no value at all for the Christians. What a sad thing, what a sad thing. Don't want to obey, don't want to hear, don't want to obey the laws and commandments and teachings of God. Disobedience will bring lots of punishment upon Christians and it's going to happen at the end of the day. That means the end of the world. It is going to happen before the second coming of our Lord Jesus. And the Bible clearly says, refusing to obey is a great warning. And therefore God says, those who will disobey, they will have this type of punishment. And not only that, verse 20, verse 20. And this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proud and be by word among all nations. All nations shall speak about that. You know? And it's a, it's a tragedy if the Christian gets, you know, all type of sorrows and pain and agony and suffers in, in spite of, you know, God giving us the victory through his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible says, refusing to obey is going to be a warning to such people. And that message, I will take it tomorrow. When you try to refuse to obey, what exactly is going to happen? Today also, we are very safe just because of one reason. Jesus paid the penalty of my sin and our sins. Jesus paid the penalty of our curses and sicknesses. Jesus paid the penalty of our death. That's why we are alive. Come back to the knowledge of God. Come back to the understanding of God. And God wants us to understand the judgment of God comes upon them, those who disobey God's voice or word. Disobedience of God's voice or word brings God's judgment upon us. So we have to be careful and we have to understand. We shall obey and we shall make a good decision saying to the Lord, Lord, I will hear your voice. I will obey your commandments so that I shall not come out of the judgment of God. And God will bless us. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give all the praise and glory and honor. The mighty hand of God, the power of God shall restore upon them. I release the blessing of God upon everyone. Everyone shall be prosperous. Everyone shall be victorious. Everyone shall be successful. Everyone, even including me. Oh yes, as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I shall be able to hear the voice of God. We shall be able to hear the voice of God. We shall be able to obey the voice of God. We shall be able to obey the laws of God. We shall be able to obey the commandments of God. And we shall be able to receive that eternal blessing that God has kept upon us. Lord, help us to not to come out of judgment, disobeying voice and laws and commandments of God. Help me and help us to obey the voice of God and laws of God and commandments of God so that we shall be away from judgments, Lord. Bless us. Release your blessings upon everyone. Everyone's prosperity will come. 
everyone will be prosperous in their jobs everyone will get new jobs everyone's best salary will come back to them everyone will have status in their jobs everyone will have a good position in their jobs everyone's work contract will be done in the name of jesus everyone's work contract will give them good bless of god everyone's extension of work will be done everyone will have the extension of work permit everyone shall have a permanent work permit in their lives also lord so that their work permit shall be extended their salary shall be extended their status shall be extended so also lord you will bless them all those who hear the voice and obey the voice of god and your blessings will be prosperity health long life oh yes good peace joy and happiness among their families and among their day to day life their finances shall never go in vain they shall receive all manner of blessings of god in their homes and in their personal life their families will be having a long life and long life blessings of god with peace shall be added unto them thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord and all those who are waiting for marriages their marriages shall be done well and all those who are waiting for the suitable partners blessing shall come unto them all those who are waiting that their suitable their suitable partners shall be born again that shall happen lord jesus all those who are in the hospitals you shall save them because you are a god of save saving grace shall continue upon them you are god still saves good god still heals and still delivers it shall happen to all of us lord we give all the praise and glory honor lift us up and bless help us to bless your holy name we want to hear your voice say amen, amen. we want to hear your laws amen. we want to obey your commandments amen. we want to give you all the glory amen. keep us away from all manner of judgments in jesus almighty name we ask and pray amen, amen. wicked in the name of jesus wicked in the blood of jesus wicked in the name of jesus god bless you all amen amen thank you jesus